On this episode of Sidebar Forever, we're quarantined. The three of us, Dwight, Swain, and Adrian, each wanted to pick a movie that we think captures the spirit of what is affecting the whole planet right now. Our picks are Mad Max, John Carpenter's The Thing, and 12 Monkeys. And while these are very different films, they do share a common trait. People living in isolation who are forced to deal with an outside threat. Our movie discussion is fast and loose at best, but really, it's an opportunity for us to emote over the current state of affairs. And to everyone, please stay safe and keep those hands washed. Good morning, Dr. Silverman. How's the knee? Did you just have a brain fart? I know Taekwondo. Stop eating my sesame cake. You're killing me, Smalls. Fuck with me, and we'll see who shits on the sidewalk. Come quietly, or there will be trouble. Clearly, I wasn't talking to you, big titties. You cherub-looking motherfucker. While you were still learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxies. The real question is, what are those? Welcome back to another episode of Sidebar Forever, the 2.0 of the old Sidebar, or <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Who wants Sidebar Forever? The new, the new platform. Who uh, wants Sidebar Forever? Ooh. That's we the are, Queen uh, riff, dog. Good. Say it again. That's like Queen Riff, dog. From mm-hmm. Who wants to live forever, dude? Oh yes. Who it wants is. to live forever? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, the three of us are based just outside of, uh, uh, Atlanta and Mm -hmm. Atlanta. Our community has been sheltering in place for about the last seven weeks now, I guess it is. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Based on the, uh, you know, the outbreak of the, uh, coronavirus, you know, everybody is social distancing and staying indoors. Everybody's getting a little bit squirrely and a little bit, uh, cabin fever turning into Jack Nicholson's character in the, uh, (laughs) In the Shining. Here's Johnny. Yeah, yeah, truly. <laughs> so anyway, we thought we thought that we would uh, have a discussion. This is a pop culture show, so we thought we'd have a discussion about uh, some films that kind of deal with the uh, the themes of isolation and quarantine. Um, you know, people being sectioned off from you know from from their neighbors, um, and, and and just you know kind of how how that kind of feels for us. Uh, as well, you know, as it relates to you know some of the characters in the films and the stories uh, that we're going to discuss. But the three films we're going to we're going to deal with are Mad Max, The Thing, <laughs> and Twelve Monkeys. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all of which I think are, are great choices for uh, for a topic like this. Oh yeah. So Adrian, why don't you start us off, man? Because I know The Thing, you know, is is one of your favorites. It's, you know, oh, it's Carpenter. Yeah. John Carpenter is one of your favorites. So uh, why don't you start us off, man? All right, well, yeah, I picked John Carpenter's The Thing um, just in terms of, you know, it talking about isolation and, you know, this this contagion. But in this case, the contagion is obviously this alien um, being, this killer alien, you know, that comes into the midst (laughs) of this camp, you know, and. The way it starts is, you know, we, we get introduced to McCready and the rest of the cast of characters, and, you know, and they're just going about their, their daily lives, you know, roller skating and playing pool and researching and flying helicopters with sombreros on, all that type of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. And then once this alien appears, you slowly start to see this carefree existence turn into one of paranoia and who's sick and then you start looking at your neighbor looking at your buddy that you just had you know drinks with earlier and you're like is it you you know don't don't come near me is it you you know what i'm saying 
And I think the thing is just, um, it, it, it plays upon that. Even more so than the great special effects of the alien and everything, it's that feeling of isolation, that feeling of paranoia that really drives the movie. You know, and even more so with the ending of the movie, too. I mean, you have Kurt Russell and uh, Keith David's characters. They've defeated the alien, but now it's like, Basically, they're going to still die anyway from exposure right. <laughs> in, in Antarctica, <laughs> you know? So it's just like, oh, so bleak, so bleak. But, you know, I, I, I think it has um, it has a correlation to, unfortunately, the real world that we're experiencing right now, you know, with the virus as well. You know, we have, and in fact, you know, my mother just informed me about a, Two weeks ago that um, some, uh, not some, but a cousin on my father's side uh, actually passed away from the coronavirus. You know? Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, me too. yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's hitting home for a lot of people, you know, and just mm-hmm. the fact that, you know, it, it seems like there's a lot of desolation there. And I feel like people, unfortunately, can start to relate to it. You know, in, in certain movies there in the pop culture. So that's why I chose the thing, you know, because to me, I think it'll take on an even more, not necessarily just a richer meaning, you know, when I watch it from now on, but the feelings and the, 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 the tense, the tense emotions that are in there, I think will be even more, much more palpable, you know, than they already are, you know, in the film. So that, that was my pick, uh, the thing. Yeah, I, I think you're right, man. The uh, I didn't even think about it in terms of how, uh, like you're saying, they're they're all like in the room together and, and, and weren't they like cutting each other to, to see yes. who Yes, oh, I, I, I meant to mention that. Thank you, Swiss. Yeah. If I can add that one part, that part where they have to do the blood test, you know, mm-hmm. McCready's like, look, each of you put a drop of your blood in these Petri dishes and mm-hmm. we're going to put this solution in there and we're going to find out who is infected now? And that's right. and that's very much like when you go to the hardware store now. When I go to dialysis now, they take my temperature at the door. I and if it and if it's above ninety eight point six, I'm not walking in there. They like, uh, you need to stay wow. your ass outside until Dang. you cool wow. down. <laughs> they 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 wow. stop you at the door to the clinic and they check your temperature. So if you've been sitting out in your car like you know eating lunch before you come in or something, and you try right. to walk right in and you still kind of hot. Uh-uh. No, wow. no. So that scene in the thing is just like that. Let's see who who is infected. And then when you find out who it is, you're like, oh, shoot. Mm-mm. Cast them out. <laughs> Get yeah. me away from me. You know, don't wow. come in here with that. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I'm in here sneezing wow. and all hot with the fever. Get out of here. That So, wow. yeah, that scene right there, that's what crystallized it in my mind as far as my pick. Thank you for mentioning that, Swizz. I meant to bring that up. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that movie is is a good example of, uh, I guess, what you would call like the the kind of, uh, and it's not necessarily culturally sensitive to use this word, this term today, but the ten little Indians. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's like one down. Okay, one more. Now one more, and then there were two. You know, McCready and Childs. You know, yeah. The, you know, the only two that are left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. But I I, I, I I haven't seen the thing in a couple of years, even though, it, you know, it pops up and I'll watch a, a, a clip, you know, a few scenes from here and there. But I've not seen it in its entirety in a while. Mm-hmm. But uh, but that's definitely that's not one that I immediately would have thought of for, for this particular uh, uh, discussion. But I think it's it, it is very it's a very good example of, uh, you know, especially like you're saying how people are now because you don't know, you know, you're wearing the masks in public because. You know, not to protect other you you from other people from you, but you from other people. Right. You don't know if you're asymptomatic and you're going to pass this on to somebody else who who isn't. And you know, my uh, my um, cousin's uncle passed away from you know COVID nineteen. Oh man. Wow. His wife is in the hospital now, fighting for her life. She's got it. Wow. You know, and this particular cousin's uh, her son is engaged to an RN. Uh, who works at the uh, hospital at the uh, University of Illinois, and she got it. And, you know, she recovered, and she's back at work. Wow. Wow. 
you know, so you just, you just never, ever know, man. You just never know. And, uh, so it's, it really, it, that, that was a good pick though. D, mm. what about yourself, man? What you going to get into some? Man, I don't know, man. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to mix it, mix, uh, fiction in with, with reality, man, because for me, the, the lines blur so, so, uh, so constantly. And, it, and I think Mad Max really is a story of a lot of different things also besides isolation. Um, I think the original Mad Max with uh, Mel Gibson um, back in, I guess, 79, 80, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, it was a story of, of uh, post-apocalyptic um, measures based on uh, poor concepts and ideas, which I guess kind of fits now, uh, <laughs> based on pe how people that have portrayed the small people, you know, um, and because of it, it left our world in the shambles. Um, and Max was perfectly fine. Um, he was a cop, perfectly fine until he lost his wife and kids. Then he went into a whole self isolationist, um, uh, mad, crazy, um, downward spiral. So he didn't want to be around anybody. All he wanted was revenge for what happened to his to his to his wife and kids on this biker gang. And you can see like hints of that now, man, um, in society where these crazy uh, posse comitatus mentality ideal people think they can go around with with which they can the amendments guaranteed the constitution guarantees they do certain things but at what point does it become a terroristic threat to walk around with something like that on your shoulder and your pocket what are you talking versus about? i'm talking about um, the isolationist ideal the isolationist ideals spiraling out into the mindset of individuals which carry weapons to capitol hills and various other uh, certain segments of society um, with the idea of making, it's time to go back to work now. Let's open back up the, open back up the, the, uh, the, uh, the different, uh, businesses and environments so that we can, we can, uh, all go back to work and make money and so on and so forth. It's like, yeah, it's true that we all need to work. It's true. We all have to have, have to pay for, pay our bills, but at the same time to exhibit, um, such a, a wanton, um, an angered filled, um, um, m measure of 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 your of your of your constitutional rights to carry arms. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's 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 subtly belligerent, but not really subtle. You know what I mean? Like if you do, if you don't like it, well, you can go ahead and try to take it away from me. Take it away from you? Why well, do I waste my time trying to do that? Like that's not what this is. You're you're looking for an opportunity. To 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 go off the deep end and take this further where it needs to go, and that's what I'm saying as far as the whole Mel Gibson thing, the whole Mad Max thing. It starts off being a a a, a problem where people in power made poor choices as far as gauging the severity of the of the need for isolation, which is which is what's happening in our in our, in our situation. But now but now it's 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 metastasized into something wherein people are now feeling like they have to hoard toilet paper they have to 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 hoard food they have to you know keep themselves inside yeah yeah you do you do you, and because they don't know where it's coming from we don't know if it's airborne we don't well it is airborne we don't know if we have to 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 put uh masks don't know if it's transmitted from from uh asymptomatic person to a symptomatic person or vice versa what the case may be but at the same time it's like we're losing our humanity in 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 strange and and, and and subtle ways and it's like it's become almost a a a free-for-all it's become a situation where people are losing their their common sense and their and their will to to um accept the situation for what it is right now to make things better for the future you know and and i know i'm going off in a whole other left field diatribe as far as we intended to go with this thing um but you know, Mad Max pretty much still is a, is a, is a tale of, of isolationist because of his, his, his discontentment with society and how it, how it went down the went down the shitter, and the the way his his, 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 his wife and children lost their lives. You know, um, I'm sorry. That's the best way I, I, can, I can describe it. You know, I, I'm on. A, I've been on a four week um, vacation because, you know, I cohabitate with uh, an elderly person in my house. Not elderly in terms of decrepit, just elderly in terms of age, mm -hmm. outside of the age bracket. And 
it's a thing wherein I didn't want to be at my, my, my full-time job being constantly, um, um, possibly inundated with this COVID-19 situation and having to and having to constantly bring it home to, to that person I care about. So I waited till, quote-unquote, the peak tapered off, and now it's, quote-unquote, flattening. Though so it's debatable um, as to how effective that was as, as, as far as whether that's flattening or not here in Georgia. Um, you know, it seems to be, um, even though numbers are going up, I think it's a question like now there are more tests out there and that because there's more tests out there, we can see there's going to be more evidence of it being more thoroughly saturated throughout our, 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 um, our individual um, areas in, inside of Georgia. Go ahead, Adrian. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm, I'm good. I, I want you to finish what you were saying, but I, I just have two things uh, in regards mm -hmm. to what you're saying. Um, one, uh, in regards to people walking around with weapons and everything, um, there have been several instances that can be attested to that. Um, the nurse in my dialysis was telling me that um, up in, I forget which, which city, but there was an elderly gentleman that was waiting in line, and there were uh, two women that were in line in front of him. And I guess he thought that they were too close to him in line even though they were minding their own business or whatnot, and he pulled a gun on them. And he said, get really? away from me. Get away from me. And drew down on them. <laughs> you see? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a, have you lost your ever-loving mind where you think you drawing a weapon on somebody is a necessary response to someone getting too close to you because what you're you fearful. It's, 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 it's not a reasonable response. Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah, it's right. Not reasonable. Yeah. It's like, it's not reasonable. what? Right? You know, right. this isn't an imminent threat to you. This is just, right. hey, let's try to be as safe as we can. Right. Which I've right. had to do in public, too, is, is tell people, you know, hey, can you give us some distance here? You know, you like right up on me, you know. So anyway, go ahead. I cut you off. <laughs> No, no, you're good. good. The other thing I was going to mention, too, uh, just in terms of isolation and that being a theme in Mad Max, you know, I do feel like in some ways people are kind of not not wholesale giving up their humanity, but little pieces. And we're willingly doing it. I, I think I had remarked to um, Swain or both of you guys how how easily this whole situation just became the new normal. It's as if. It caught us by surprise for one week, and then instantly after, thereafter, there were glass partitions everywhere, like a damn liquor store, and there were all all these other precautions being taken. As and it just popped up. It seemed like the next week, all these businesses and everything knew exactly what they were going to do, you know. And it's just crazy how this has become like the new normal. And even, and to me, my theory is, is that even after this whole thing clears up, it's not going to go back to how it was before. You know, hmm. the nation right now, um, more and more states are choosing to reopen businesses um, incrementally and slowly. But I still feel like people are going to have that. It's that once people want to be amongst each other, but they still want that personal space, even more so now. You well, know, it's, it's not just the wanting part of it. It's, I mean, that's like that's why what Dwight is saying. I mean, without us kind of going off on a rabbit trail and not even talking about movies. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's an unreasonable response because this is a public safety issue. This is not about your rights or you know anything like that. This is. You know, we've got to do these things because you've got to try to minimize the, the transmission of the disease and you've got to try to find out where people have been so that you can stop the transmission chains. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, you know, I sent you guys a couple of articles, you know, when the Spanish flu hit back in the 1819, I think it was, mm -hmm. it was the same thing. Assholes who didn't want to wear masks, who didn't want to cancel parades, who didn't want to cancel the theater. And, and so, you know, you end up having a second and a third wave of this and it ends up going on longer than it has to. If this was just a random thing that was not attacking people in our society that our society deems is, 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 is non-essential elderly people and people who are medically fragile. Most people, this is what people are thinking. Well, you know, if they die, okay, well, they was probably going to die anyway. 
Mm-hmm. That's that's the attitude that people have. That's why people are not moved and they're not shook by the idea that seventy thousand people have died from this in three months. Yeah, seventy thousand people. It's not even comparable to the flu. The flu would sometimes take out three to five thousand people in a year. This is seventy thousand mm-hmm. in three months. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. a public safety issue, and that's why. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, the economy is suffering, but I mean, you can't put the economy in front of lives. If you this can't. was attacking children under the age of 10, you best goddamn believe everybody would be talking about how everybody needs to be wearing a mask. But because mm-hmm. it's elderly people who are seen as targets and it's the medically fragile, everybody has a bit more of a callous attitude about it. I'm healthy as mm-hmm. a horse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why, this is the way I feel. If, sure. you, if, you, if you're not scared of it, you deserve to get it. If you're not scared of it and you're going to walk around without a mask and not giving people six feet distance, you deserve to get it. Mm-hmm. That's your business. Mm-hmm. Handle mm-hmm. your business. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Yeah, that's all yeah. I want to say. We don't have any time to talk about all that. Right. I, I thought, I, one of the things I thought about the Mad Max as a choice uh, when D brought it up was because gasoline was like the big commodity. Right. In that movie, right? Okay. So the gasoline is yeah, like yeah, toilet yeah. paper and like meat. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, there's people hoarding, you know, toilet paper and meat. They're, you know, they're hoarding the gasoline. And people were kind of isolated. You know, it's like, okay, you now you have like roving bands, like the, the biker gang. Mm-hmm. You know, Max was by himself. But, you know, in most apocalyptic films, like Mad Max is kind of akin to like, uh, let's say, the, the Book of Eli. Mm-hmm. Or uh, a boy and his dog, or uh, even Omega Man, and yeah. um, <laughs> uh, I Am Legend, and 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 Twenty Eight Days Later, where you know mm-hmm. it's like okay, society is forever changed, or even the the Walking Dead, which I know D, you know you've seen the Walking Dead, oh yeah, uh, as well. But you know it's you know people get into packs, you know, mm-hmm. and and they stay amongst their own, and and mm-hmm. you know when you come in contact with others, you know. You know, you don't you don't take anybody in because you don't know who they are. You don't know what they got. Right. You right. You just give them a side eye. You look like you know what, what's what's really going on with these people and why are they out on their own and, and kind yeah. of wandering and meander. Yeah. 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 But um, my choice was uh, Twelve Monkeys, mm-hmm. um, which came out in 1995, directed by uh, uh, um, Terry Gilliam. Yeah, directed by <laughs> I was like brain fart for a second there. Directed by uh, Terry Gilliam and starring uh, Bruce Willis, and Madeline Stowe, Brad Pitt, David Morris, and Christopher Plummer. And uh, I like, I've always, I always liked that movie. And, and in thinking about, you know, this conversation we we're going to have, I thought it'd be a good choice because, you know, that movie is, 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 is very close to what we're dealing with now, where there was a contagion or there was a, a, a germ outbreak and it made living on the surface of the earth unlivable so everybody had to move underground Mm -hmm. and uh, you could go outside but you had to go outside with like this full hazmat suit on and you know it didn't affect the animals because you know there were lions roaming around in uh you know in the public spaces you know wild animals you know had basically come into areas which were previously urban Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know they're all living underground and, and and trying to stay separate from uh stay away from the outside world uh and even though they're all together, there is an isolated mentality because they were constantly trying to figure out a way through science and then all, and then eventually through, you know, like, you know, it's a science fiction. Time travel, right? Yeah. 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 Almost using, you know, a scientific method, uh, science fiction method to try to figure out how to undo what had been done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I always I always really liked the movie. Another uh, thing I, um, I didn't think about until I was doing some research is uh, Frank Gorshin was in the movie as a Dr. Fletcher. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Riddler, yo. The Riddler, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but anyway, you know, uh, Gilliam's directing, his style, you know, was really good for it. It's kind of steampunkish, mm-hmm. kind of a sci-fi vibe, almost like, you know, like some of his previous mo- movies. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and, it, and Bruce Willis's character was a little crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, he, I think he was a prisoner. Wasn't he a prisoner? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it in a while, but I think he was a prisoner, but he was a little bit crazy. And of course, when he, once he traveled back in time to modern day, you know, he was definitely seen as crazy and ended up in a, uh, in a, in a, in a, a mental institution. And that's where he encountered Brad Pitt. 
whom for most of the movie he thought, you know, was the reason why the contagion, you know, the outbreak happened. And then come to find out that that was a, uh, a red herring and that it was it was actually David Morris's character who intentionally released it. And it, and, and now, you know, pun, you know, now there's, you know, there's conspiracy theories out there that, mm-hmm. you know, the contagion didn't come from the wet markets in Wuhan, but it actually came from, you know, from a lab four miles away and uh, and protocols were not met and that maybe this actually got out. And you see how, you know, like even at the end of 12 Monkeys, when Dave Morris's character is in the airport and he opens the vial and says, see, it's it's odorless. You can't even smell it. And, it, it, you know, and it's invisible and it's already doing its thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just like it is here where, you know, in Wuhan in like mid-December of last year, you know, they, they diagnosed like their first case or they had their first death from, you know, coronavirus. And a hundred days later, you know, it's, or three months later, or a month later, it was in a hundred countries. Mm-hmm. You know, three and a half, almost four months later, you know, there's like a million people dead, you know, around the planet, you know, and however many infected. And now they're saying maybe 60 to 70 percent of us are going to get this before it's all over with. You know, so it's it's just it's just a scary thing, and 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 the paranoia that Adrian was talking about with um, you know, with the thing. Is is very real, and you know, like you know, D was saying, and you know, y'all talking about people, you know, running around with guns, and you know, and all of that. So, I was gonna also say, like, you know, I th- I think it's elicited also the baser emotions of people, uh, in particular this latent racism you know with the whole paranoia of oh it came from a chinese lab well that means chinese people have it people from china have it so we we have to oust them i mean there have been several uh, reports of attacks upon asians not just of chinese origin but just because they're asian even worse so in china itself if i'm recalling correctly um there is it in China where there's like a like a Nigerian or African uh, yeah. population? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're being ostracized. And they're being ostracized, yeah. E- immensely so because there's kind of that thing over there of, well, maybe they have it. And so just everyone is kind of partaking in that that, that paranoia. And it's just, oh, it's, it's, it's sickening. It's sickening. And, you know, contrary to all of these commercials out now, <laughs> I make... I make fun of them to my daughters. I said, watch this. You know what I'm going to say. Okay, we'll be out there watching TV, right? And you know the commercials get ready to come on because it's a soft piano beat. <laughs> do, do, do. In these trying times. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're all together. We're we all, all together. are as one. So Stay bang your safe. pots and pans at 7 o'clock every night. I'm not taking my pan outside to bang on that shit. I know, I know what they do. I really? Is it? Is that, I'm not that's going. a thing? No, no. It's like it's like everything is like, oh, we all need to come together. You okay. feel that need before all this. And once we get better, <laughs> it's going to go back to the same. We're like, get up off me. Back up. <laughs> but, but, you know, the thing about it is, is that there are companies who want to sell you things mm-hmm. are stuck yep. twofold. One, they can't just come on there with people singing and dancing and, you know, brothers, brothers, you know, dancing and, and juking, you know, and, yeah. you know, they try to sell you fried chicken and, and, you know, you know, you want a Cadillac. They can't just do that anymore. So they have to mention it. That's one. Yeah. And two, they're stuck in this in another way because they've already paid for this advertisement. So they have to use it. Like they can't not use it. So it's just like every commercial is like I get it. We, every commercial is like We several, here at the Honda dealership care about uh, your needs. No the hell you don't. Because exactly. you want me to come up in that dealership and sit up in there for three hours like y'all make us do every time you buy a new car <laughs> and ain't nobody coming up in there and sit in there for no three goddamn hours dodging coronavirus droplets because you want to sell me a car. <laughs> but you gotta get that new gotta get that twenty twenty one accord, Joe. Amen. That twenty twenty one, yo. Amen. That's that fire right Amen. there. But, but what gets me mm-hmm. though is it's just the thing of we were talking earlier about how little by little people are giving up their humanity. Now it's not drastic or anything, but like in those commercials, <laughs> every other commercial now has like uh, a, a 
a dozen screenshots at once of people in quarantine in their house, and they're every, all eating every tacos in front of the camera. Zoom mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. You got a whole family dancing over some tacos. Like, come on, bro. Come on, man. Amen. <laughs> Maybe I'm Amen. just being a, a, a cranky old man, and I probably am. But I'm just like, come on, man. Y'all, y'all doing the most. Come on. <laughs> It's 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 truly telling where um, Charmin has a commercial with the Bears. It's usually pretty funny, happy go lucky, and they, they they're, they're like, you know, no, no. we are we yeah yeah we're we're like they're like um, we realize in this trying time that you feel like you're running out of toilet paper, but but rest assured we are it is in production, so you're, 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 you'll be okay. You can wipe your what? Right. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm Lord. like, wow. Oh my wow. goodness, man. Is that is that where we are now? You know, Apparently and so. and the thing is, the thing is, it's it's, you know, man, that's why I, it's very important to me, man. And um, you know, when when I mention faith, it's not about um, it's not about a, um, the faith in, in a higher power per se. It's the faith in the in the decency and human uh, the decency and human and human qualities, humaneness of man. And I think a lot of times it's like when you go out and you and you're shopping like into the worlds because. You don't have enough inside yourself to, and enough, enough, enough intellectual wherewithal to do the proper studies and put things in place from the beginning, so that you know that this is not something that's going to last. If we if we take heed to what needs to be done right now, what needs to be done right now is like going out to the grocery store and buying up all the freaking toilet paper. Well, that, you know, by see, by that you're creating you're creating a need that wasn't there before. Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. And, you know, but see, that's what happens is, is people like now, oh, the, you know, T Tyson and some of the, you know, some of the meat plants oh, yeah. had big coronavirus outbreaks. So now they're saying there's going to be a shortage of meat. So now people right. are hoarding meat. So what you see happening is, is the retailers are like, look, you can only buy two packs of meat per person. You can only right. buy one roll of toilet paper and one roll of paper towels per right. person. And if everybody right. just buys in moderation, then you know you'll get will everybody will have enough to get by but it's like okay if you want to buy all the toilet paper in the world you know it's like okay now there's not going to be any for somebody else now somebody else is desperate it's people desperate uh, yeah. you know about six weeks ago some people were desperate trying to find toilet paper yeah yeah mm. so yeah. it really it really is an ex extreme but you know I get it, and see, like now, I mean, if anybody's winning now, to some extent, it's the retailers. It, well, the retailers per se, but it's it's the uh, the cable news channels. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they're running coronavirus twenty four hours a day. Repeat, repeat, they're repeating Ra Rachel Maddow. They're repeating uh, Ari Mebler's show. They're just running it all the time, and oh, people yeah. are watching it all day long. And that you know, and that's good for their ratings. That's good for 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 uh you know for their advertising dollars uh, that they um you know that they sell you know so or the I, so I simply I simply can't do it. I simply can't do it. You know they 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 take off um, standard television shows um, like there was on ABC. There was um, a show that came on during the afternoon for a pandemic show. You know, <laughs> it's like it's, it's like okay, yeah, we get it. You know, but you know, there's nothing that you're telling me that's new from yesterday. Right. It's it's current enough for you to to warrant a, a, a systemic TV show that comes on at the same time every day. A, a pandemic <laughs> town hall, yo. Right. You know, it's <laughs> like, well, no, not, no, not, I'm not going to go into that. That's just, yeah, that's too easy. Cool, that's cool. that's low hanging fruit. But but I mean, it just, it's in terms of like, it's in terms of like like the, the the pandemic oriented shows, not not the you know. Whatever you talking about um, the news shows, or you talking about a fiction? The, the news, the the news shows, the news well, shows. The, like but they, a... there is new information every day. But it's yeah, like if but... you watch it for about ten minutes in the morning and maybe ten minutes you got in the it. evening, you got it. Mm -hmm. You got you it. You got everything you need to know for right. the day. I don't. I don't need an hour of that. No. I don't need an hour of that. Just slot an hour for that. I don't. I don't need a constant little small scrolling updates of what's happening inside of the state. I don't need that because you're not, you're not you're not up to date anyway. It's like this constant need for information. Like it's like it breeds. In, it's all in your Google feed. It's everywhere. Yeah, it breeds a hysteria, man. And I, I refuse to come to that, dude. So I, I, honestly, right now, my my stations. I'm on YouTube, dude. I'm learning and watching things that I wanna I wanna engage in. I'm not I'm not gonna allow them to dictate my my mindset and change things for me. I just can't, I can't do that. Then I have that privilege, 
and I, and I encourage any 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 um, free thinking human being out there to do the same thing. You know, you you control what you what you intake, and once you've had enough, turn that ish off, and 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 look towards things which are positive can, that can give you motivation inside of this 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 crisis scenario. Which this is not honestly, man. I, I, I can't help but last one. I mean, I know COVID-19 is a very real thing, and anybody that doesn't take it seriously is, is, is an idiot. They're fooling themselves and their families. Yeah. But if this is a test for what a true pandemic is, we have failed miserably as a species. We are doomed. Mm. Because this, <laughs> a true pandemic will wipe your ass out in a matter of hours, days, not over a course of you, you have options to go put put a, put a mask on and and walk amongst people and go to the grocery store and 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 oh, oh no 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 people, this is only as bad as you make it literally because you are not adhering to certain guidelines that the government that the government not the government per se but the health officials the have put health in boards, place for you. CDC, right. The World Health Organization. Right. Yeah, so but... trying to bring this all back around. I'm sorry. Back to Mad Max. <laughs> Which is, you know, about poor little Max and the situation with his family. You know, he was reacting to a situation which led him to be isolationist because he couldn't really cope or deal with the loss of his of his of his, of his family. So, what were you gonna say? I was I was <laughs> gonna say, you know, D had made a good point um, earlier this week or may, maybe previously. You know, just as how Americans, and I'm gonna speak in Americans here. Uh, kind of a plural, you know, we look at other cultures, like say for instance, in um, countries like Japan and China, even before the outbreak of this, you know, you would see, you know, a lot of the populations uh, there wearing masks, you know, and it's kind of like, oh man, look at them, many, many wear masks everywhere. Now part of it is yes, um, especially in like Tokyo and places like that, it's a very dense population, population you know right. so there's a lot of pollution and everything and mm -hmm. you know there is more of a breeding ground for you know colds and flus and things like that normal diseases you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and i think we as americans looked at that as like oh, oh that's so <laughs> whatever. whatever those are the cultures exactly they but now they we're in that boat you know, mm -hmm. now, it's, now it's not so funny. Now it's not mm -hmm. so, you, you, you can't mock that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and But I still feel like also Americans are not taking this seriously at all, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, mm -hmm. when the stay at home order was brought down here in Georgia, you know, my wife was on me about stay your ass inside, okay? Because I got, you know, kidney disease and stuff, and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm one of those that could be endangered. So mm -hmm, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, no problem. Now, now I, I will say, I did go to the store to pick up some things, but I had my mask on, sanitizer, the whole nine. You know, mm -hmm. was being as careful as I could. Now, in recent mm -hmm. weeks, I've, you know, dialed back on that, but you still see the same number of people out there driving. When I go to dialysis, oh, man, they just driving like it ain't nothing. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not until the National Guard or someone at the point of a gun says, keep your ass inside. Uh, don't bring your ass outside. Then people will be like, OK, all right, bro, you got it. You got it. You got it. But <laughs> beyond that, it's like Americans, man, they just I'm going to do what I want to do. You better open this <laughs> restaurant back up. You better. Mm -mm. And it's just like, mm -mm. y'all not taking <laughs> it too serious enough yet. You know, That's and I don't want to. Go ahead. I'm, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. and I was just going to finish by saying, and I don't know, I don't even want to imagine what is going to be the tipping point, the critical point that's going to convince Americans as a whole that, yo, this is this is serious and we need to heed it like together, you know, as lame as that sounds. But seriously, well, I, I think I think we're there. I think I think I think you do see it as being a serious thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. I think it's a question of like like. Whether or not it impinges on their rights to 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 earn money for their families and things of that nature, it's it's a critical balancing act. Like I think we've 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 um, I don't think I can't say they haven't done enough. I think let's put it this way. Well, I think about the amount of money, the trillions of dollars right now that's been spent on these on these pack on these on these, on these packages for uh, recovery. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind. It blows my freaking mind. Um, but at the same time, I realized that, okay, 
We should have a certain amount of money put aside anyway with as much money as we pay in taxes every year for the past Dude. 40 years plus that I've been alive as an American. Dude, the $1,200, uh -huh. the stimulus check. Right. They, I mean, they are steady trying to make everybody, not steady, but I mean, there's a segment out there that's trying to make people feel guilty for taking the check. That's my money. Right. right. You, you're giving right. me back my money, bro. Right. What are you talking about? Right. Right. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, I need, I need $1,200. I mean, I mean, dang, I mean, all right. I mean, I think I, I think I got it. What you mean? You think you got it? I've been paying you for 40 years. You got it? Seriously. You good for Seriously. Them. You got Seriously. it? Seriously. You know, Seriously. You see how fast they threw a trillion dollars at Wall Street. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we don't have dude. money for this. We don't have money to forgive student loans. We don't have money for universal health care. We don't have money for right. for any of those things. But we got a trillion dollars to throw at some Wall Street fat cat fuckers, so that so that they yeah. can, you know to bail them out. Yeah, yeah, and we, and we got money. We got money to build these these million dollar freaking airplanes. <laughs> money to build these crazy million dollar ships. That never really seen any kind of real warfare because nobody could fuck with us because our power because we spent so much money on these machines that we, we pretty much have air superiority, mm. you know. So it's like, you know it's, what I mean? It's like I, it's it's a question of where you want to put your money. Like, like I I, I, I quote this man and I, and I mean it. I mean it as 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 much with an amount of anger and and viciousness as I possibly can can can, can say it. <sighs> people shouldn't be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their fucking people. And that's from V for Vendetta. And I live for the day. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Damn, that's all <laughs> for bold day shit. Damn, okay. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, Guy Fox, all right. Air, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a confederacy of dunces, yo. It's like, dude. You know, don't play me like I'm like I'm like 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 the money that I'm giving you is a f like 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 Swain said like like you're doing me a favor. I mean, we pay in taxes for fucking years, dude. Multiply us times a million other motherfuckers in this country, and you got that money, dog. Where you're putting it is a question. Where you chose to invest it without our knowledge is is the question. And the you other know? the other part of it is this: we've got to start thinking about the fact that that you know this. And I don't want to use the term the new normal because that's been you know, that was been been used to death, and, um, mm. and it's it's kind of of a time of you know, <coughs> it sounds very kind of like 2015 or whatever, or 2010. Mm. But <laughs> sorry, Adrian. Yeah, I just used it. It's all good. You good, I know, bro? I know. I'm I just got saying. You. It's all good, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying. I know you did. But, uh, <laughs> but my point is, is this: moving forward, we are. I'm not saying it's it's just going to be because of coronavirus. The world is changing. We are going mm -hmm. to have to start thinking about things in a different way. Mm -hmm. People are stuck in this mentality of the way things were is the only way things can be. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. Money mm -hmm. is a construct. It is a piece mm -hmm. of paper that we have assigned value to it. Mm -hmm. The government could come out tomorrow and say, okay, as of now, a dollar is worth 50 cents. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden... Jeff Bezos is not worth $130 billion. Now he's worth, uh, what, $65 billion. Be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, everybody is worth half as much as they thought. That's a construct. Mm -hmm. We just say, hey, this piece of paper represents that. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. can change that tomorrow. And it's the same thing with anything else in our society. You know, we're going to have to start thinking about things in a different way than we have. People, are, you know, you hear older people talk about and this is a bit of a tangent, but, you know, people talk about, you know, oh, the kids today, you know, they're always on their cell phones and texting and social media and TikTok and all this. And, you know, they're not going to have any social skills. They're not going to have know how to deal with the real world in the future. Well, this, and this is I've said this to several people before. Are mm -hmm. they going to have no social skills or are they going to have different social skills? There it is. Because it's a different way of communicating. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure if we went back to the 1940s or 50s when people started having phones in their home, everybody said it was going to be the end of the world. And all of a sudden people would stop socializing because you could just call them on the phone and talk mm -hmm. to them instead of going and talking to them face to face. Did that happen? No. When the mm -hmm. VCR came along, oh, people are not going to go to the movies anymore. Did that happen? No. No. 
it just becomes a new way of doing things or an added mm-hmm. benefit to society. And eventually some things do fall away. We don't use pages mm-hmm. anymore. We don't mm-hmm. use word processors. And mm-hmm. moving forward in the future, you know, I was fine with not having to necessarily shake everybody's goddamn hand every five minutes. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think people people think because I, I, I like to talk that I'm, you know, that I like, you know, like you're gregarious and being around and, crowds yeah. and shit. I don't. Mm-hmm. You know, I really don't. I don't care for that. I do prefer to be by myself and to, and to you know, kind of enjoy my things. And, you know, I like mm-hmm. small control groups. I, I don't need a big crowd. I'm like Drew Struzan. Mm-hmm. I don't get mm-hmm. my power from a crowd. I, you know, I lose mm-hmm. my power, you know, going in crowds. I get tired mm-hmm. of going to conventions mm-hmm. and shit, yo. Every convention we've ever been to, if it was longer than three days, by the second day, I was done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I was like, okay, I'm good. I actually just right. want to now just visit the city and just see, you know, right. and see, and see what's up. You know, it's just, right. it's just, you know, crowds are just, so anyway, it's just, you know, we're all going to have to adjust to the future. Things are just not going to stay the same. Life doesn't mm-hmm. exist in stasis. It's not a, mm-hmm. a sitcom where we reset at the end and everybody's okay and sitting on the couch, right. you know, talking right. about, you know, going to, you know, Jackie's Pizzeria for right. a slice. That concludes this episode of Sidebar Forever, hosted by Dwight Clark, Swain Hunt, and Adrian Johnson. You can find us online at sidebarforever.com. Any emails or questions can be directed to us at sidebarforever at gmail.com. And also, subscribe to us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Sidebar Forever is copyright 2020. Dwight Clark, Swain Hunt, and Adrian Johnson.